Hello and welcome to today's video. So I'm going to give you a bit of a trigger warning just before we start. This is potentially a very triggering video, especially if you have a lot of shit happening in your life right now. If you've got a lot of stress, if you've got a lot of chaos, if you've got a lot of health problems, if you've got a lot of things happening, this is going to be potentially triggering. But I'm trying to share this with you because I've just been through this myself and this has been profoundly helpful and I can feel things shifting. And if I can share something with you that may potentially trigger you, but also may potentially lay, sow the seeds of you getting out of where you're feeling stuck, I will, I will do it. So you have a trigger warning there and do with it what you will. But this could be really, really helpful for you. This could really change the direction of your process in your life right now. It did for me. So letting go, letting go of our, just letting go, letting go of everything. What, why is this important? What does it mean? So I'm going to go back to my childhood and give you a little bit of a little bit of a story and maybe you'll relate to this. So when you are raised in an environment that causes a sympathetic dominant nervous system state, so not very much relaxation, not very much safety, not very much feeling okay, constantly hypervigilant, looking for dangers, looking for threats, and then feed that into other situations in your life that may have triggered those same kind of things. For example, living in mold, that puts your body on a physical level, saying like, I'm not safe, there's some danger, where is it? And you can't, obviously you can't see mycotoxins, they're floating around in the air, so there's just this unseen danger. And all of this kind of fuses together, and it, and it wires the nervous system in a way where you become sympathetic dominant and you become hypervigilant around everything that's not working in your life right now. Not having enough money, having physical pain, not making enough progress in your healing journey, reacting to a food, having a sensitivity to something. It's like that becomes your whole life and that's all you can see, that's all you know and that's all you are. And you're just living in this life of just suffering, of pain, of it's just horrible. And I've, I've been in a bit of a hole the last couple of weeks, the last maybe let's say three, maybe even four weeks. I've just been in a bit of a hole. And I've been in enough holes in my life to know that when I get out of the hole on the other end, I see how the whole thing was happening for me. I learn so much. I grow so much. I get new levels of understanding. And it's great. But when I'm in the hole, it sucks. You know, it's horrible. Like, it's hard to get through the day. You have physical things happening in your body, you know, symptoms, health problems, and they take your focus. You don't feel creative. You don't feel inspired. You don't feel social. You just feel completely overwhelmed with the whole world around you. And all you want to do is, like, get away and rest and recuperate and regenerate and restore. But because your nervous system is just wired for chaos, you, you can't. So you, like, take time to relax and it's actually stressful it's actually more stressful than if you were just immer immersed directly in chaos because being in a a calm state feels traumatic it feels the, the feeling of boredom is like it's so unbearable it's so uncomfortable and it's just crazy, you know, it just feels absolutely insane to live like that because you have no, you have no pause, you have no stop, you're just depleting, depleting, depleting all of the time and you're always stressed and the only way that you can actually escape that distressed state is to just distract yourself, be that video games, which it is for me very often, scrolling on social media, watching YouTube videos, YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, Facebook stories, falling into your phone, binging Netflix, whatever it looks like. You're just kind of chasing that dopamine dragon and just trying to escape how stressed you feel, how, how dysregulated you feel. Because if you try to sit with yourself and regulate yourself, it's actually traumatic and it's actually really stressful. So if that sounds like you, if you can relate to my experience over the past couple of weeks, I have a solution for you. I'll, I will be completely honest. You, you're not going to like it. I don't like it. I don't like it either. Um, I, but this is the thing that I've, I've, I've found about the healing processes. It doesn't matter if I like it. It's really not important. Healing is what it is. It's not what you want it to be. So whether you like it or not is actually irrelevant. And 
the healing process is what the healing process is. And yes, it's different for everybody, but being in, being in a parasympathetic dominant state, so being in a rest and digest state is kind of a prerequisite for healing. So if you're wired for chaos and you're wired for sympathetic dominance, always doing something, even when things calm down, you, you find something to get busy with. And even if you're laying there and you're still, but your mind is still like whirring, it's racing, you're just not, you're not calm, your, your, your sympathetic nervous system is still activated. And like, I'm sure there's several people like, in, including myself that know that experiencing something like chronic fatigue syndrome, you know, where your body is just drained, like you don't have any physical energy whatsoever, but then you lay down and you try to have a nap and your brain is just like, like thoughts, 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 things can't relax, can't rest, can't reset. It's just, it's just an insane place to be. So I have a practice for you to help you with this. So I'm working with a practitioner and she said something very wise and it was really, really helpful for me. And I know that to get to a state where my nervous system regulates itself, I have to, I have to meditate and I have to be with myself. That, that's basically how regulation works. Regulation is a, is a byproduct of, of, of awareness and of being with yourself. Think about a child having a tantrum. You know, they don't just regulate automatically. At that age, it's very difficult for them to do it. If you just sit with a child as it has the biggest tantrum of its life, it's angry, it's flailing around, then it's crying and it's snotty, then it's sad, and then it kind of figures itself out. And that's because you're there helping it process its emotions, helping it to regulate its nervous system state. And it goes through that extreme emotional sympathetic dominance and wraps itself back up and comes back to a parasympathetic state where they're relaxed and they're calm again and the emotion is discharged. And we need to do this with ourselves. But obviously, if sitting with yourself and sitting with that chaos is traumatic, you're not going to want to do it. And this is, this, is, this is the biggest challenge for me is I know meditation is very helpful for me. I know it's one of the most basic things, but also one of the most profound thing that, things that helps me uh, feel good, heal, be productive, do all of this stuff that I need to do in my life. And I always would go into it with the intention of like getting to that state. And I realized that's the wrong mentality. And I've struggled to meditate for, for months, honestly months, like eight months. I just haven't been able to do it. And I've meditated two days in a row. So go me, two days in a row. As far as I'm concerned, that's like one of the, my biggest wins this year. If I've been struggling for that long and now I did two days in a row, cool. It's amazing. How did I achieve this? But it's a mindset shift. And the mindset shift was, instead of going into a meditative state to try and become calm and to try and reach this state of peace and tranquility, I was going into it with a mindset of, I'm going to endure the pain and the suffering of being with myself. And that's actually my goal, is to go in, at least initially, and just feel all of the dysregulation, feel my pain, feel my physical discomfort, feel my symptoms, feel my my thoughts that are whirring and whirring and whirring, feel all of my worries about like logistics of running a business and money. And obviously I help people with their health. So I'm worrying about other people all the time as well. And then you always get the, the imposter syndrome. Am I good enough? Do I know what I'm doing? Can I really help this person? Like th th these, these are every single practitioner that is actually ethical, like thinks these things, you know, because that's just a natural part of caring about other people. You want to make sure that you can help them. So, all of these things like whirring inside of me all the time and I never get a break. I just never have a pause from, from all of this. And yeah, maybe I'm, I take a holiday. My nervous system is still flying around all over the place. So to start these meditations, I go in and I just like, okay, I am going to see my pain. I'm going to endure this discomfort, this suffering. I'm going to, it's basically going in with the mindset of I'm going to torch myself for a little while. And that's how I have to start because that's the reality of my experience when I go in and, and stay with myself and I do that and I stay with that for a while and that intention works to get me into the meditation and I'm, and I'm in there and I'm feeling it and it's like, wow, this is, no wonder you never want to feel your, feel your body. No wonder you always want to escape because you feel like shit. <laughs> so <laughs> any human would want to avoid that. The thing is, it's the avoiding it that makes it grow and get worse. So as you stay with it, it kind of settles down. It begins to calm itself down. And it gets to a point where I have an insight, and this usually triggers, it's triggered in both these meditations. 
I've taken I've taken a lot of magic mushrooms. I've taken at least a dozen um, full magic mushroom journeys, and they have been profoundly helpful in helping me understand what healing actually is, not what I want it to be. And what I want it to be is, I've got this pain in my body, I'm going to look at it until it goes away. I've got this discomfort in my body, I'm going to look at it until it goes away. I've got this problem in my mind, I'm just going to keep thinking about it over and over and over again until I find a solution and then it goes away. And that's not how it works. That's actually just not how it works. And I don't like that. And it doesn't matter. Like, it, it doesn't matter if I like it or not. That's just not how it works. And this is a, a, a message that the mushrooms reiterated to me over and over and over again is that's not how it works. If you want to do healing, then we're ready to show you what healing is. And when you're ready, like, come back and let us know and we'll, we'll show you. But if you want to keep doing that, that's fine. Do keep doing that. But you can suffer. You can endure that. That's, that's up to you. So at some point, you have to let this go. You have to let your pain go. You have to let your discomfort go. You have to let your worry go. You have to let your problems go. And it doesn't mean let them go forever. It doesn't mean if you have bills to pay, just be like, just forget about them and just don't pay them. It doesn't mean that. What I mean is creating some space in your nervous system where you have a period of time, even if it's like five or 10 minutes, where you're just not attached to these problems. Like if you're so attached to them with your mind and with your emotions, you're, you're, you're detached from the solution. You literally cannot find it from that state, from that point of like emotional vibration, from that point of consciousness, you cannot find the solution and you will just continue suffering. Your problems will not change. Your symptoms will continue to exist because you're so attached to them. So if you want them to, to go, you have to let them go. And it, it's not the way around that you want it to be. You're like, yeah, well, I'd stop thinking about my symptoms when, they, when they're not there anymore. I'm afraid it doesn't work like that. And I know how annoying it is. Like you could be annoyed at me, but it doesn't change the process. I'm annoyed at it but it doesn't change the process. It just is what it is. So if you can get to a state where, so I'm feeling this in my body and I'm like, okay, I'm focusing on my pain. You know, I'm focusing on how my shoulder hurts. Oh, my left foot is going numb. I have this abdominal pain. I have this, I have that. And eventually I get to a point where it's like, okay, this isn't what healing is. I, I remember what the mushrooms have told me. And I'm like, okay, this isn't what healing is. So what is healing? And what they've taught me is it's relaxing. It's taking this, this pain, this discomfort, this worry, this stress, whatever it is, and just let it go. And just, it doesn't mean like pretend it doesn't exist. It means give it, like trust its care to something else. So for example, with a physical symptom or a physical pain, if I feel it in my physical body, I'm able to say in my mind, like I trust my body so much that I'm able to let go of this symptom, let go of this pain, let go of this discomfort with my mind and I trust it over to my body. And I, let my, I, get, I allow my mind, which you can think of like is your nervous system, I allow it to disconnect from it. And I do the same thing with, with thoughts and emotions and things like that. Obviously, I don't, I don't, to me, it doesn't feel as appropriate to surrender them to my body. It feels more appropriate to surrender them to a higher power, whatever that looks like for you. For me, it's God. For you, that could be the universe. That could be your higher self. It could be something bigger than you that takes care of you, wh whatever that looks like. And if you are an atheist, maybe it is your body. You know, maybe you can surrender it to nature or your or your body or, or something, you know, because even if you're an atheist, you, I mean, to be honest, I think if you don't think there's something bigger than you, you're just not really looking for it. Even if you're an atheist, like you can see mother nature is bigger than you. You're an animal. There are thousands of animal kingdoms. Nature runs in cycles. It's unfathomably complex. It's bigger than you. So even from an atheist perspective, there's a natural intelligence to the body and a natural intelligence to the world. So either way, there is something bigger, bigger than you and surrendering our problems, health problems, physical symptoms and surrendering our, our worries to this, to this, to this higher power, whatever it is, and just sitting in peace and just being okay and allowing natural feelings of, of goodness, of of pleasure, of comfort to arise and, and actively looking for them. Because this is like, I work with thousands of people. I can tell you, people that have chronic health problems, they do not have enough fun. They do not enjoy their, themselves. The amount of positive emotion that they feel, like compared to negative emotion is absurd. Like they have almost no positive emotion and their worlds are just dominated by negativity. And it, it, you get stuck in that perpetual loop. If all you have is negativity, then all you get is negativity. 
you can disconnect from it for a little while. And I'm not saying it's easy, you know, when you've got a raging headache, when you've got like severe pain, like I know it's hard and I'm, 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 I'm on your side. Like I don't like it either. Okay. I don't like it, but this is what it is. Like I didn't, I didn't make the rules. I didn't, I didn't invent healing. Healing already exists. I'm just trying to tell you what I found it to be. So I don't like it. I, I probably like it just as little as you do or like it even less. But that's what it is, okay? That's just what it is. So if you can get to a point where you can let it go and you can just feel comfort and safety and pleasure, you can start to become more things. And then your life changes, you know? Then your symptoms go away. Then you have shitloads of money and you have loads of great friends and you're going out on adventures, hiking, mountain climbing, surfing, doing all the things that you want to do. But all of these things are associated with positive emotions. And the positive emotion comes first. You have to feel the positive emotion first and then you'll get the, the physical like manifestation of that emotion afterwards. Emotional state and the nervous system regulation comes first. I hope you found this really helpful. Let me know if it's annoying because I would also really like to know that I'm not the only person that finds this a really annoying thing. But if you can give it a shot and try it, even if you just try one meditation now, sit down, put five, a five minute alarm on your phone. See how hard it is to let go of your pain, to let go of your suffering, to let go of your discomfort, to let go of your worry and your fear. It's really, really hard. And if you go into it with the mindset of going into it to endure those things so that you can meet them, so that you can eventually learn to let them go, eventually you will be able to let them go. And maybe it won't happen today. Maybe it won't happen tomorrow. As I said, I've only just done two meditations recently, but I've been doing this for like six, eight years. You know, I'm not new to this rodeo. Maybe you are. If you can get to a point where you can start letting go of those things, your life will change. I absolutely guarantee and, and promise you that it will. It, it, it literally can't not. Hope you found it really helpful. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.